Welcome everyone. My name is Kyle Troy and I am the marine biologist here at the Marine Education Center in Harbor Island Park. Um, today we're going to be talking about crabs of the Long Island Sound. There's lots out there. The Long Island Sound, for those of you guys that are new, is an estuary, so that means it's salt and fresh water. So it makes for a very unique ecosystem with lots and lots of animals. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of the crabs that live here. There are lots, um, and I'll show you some of them. I am open, so you guys can come down and check out some of the animals that we have down here. Everything is native to the sound, and there's big tanks and you guys can look at all the animals on here nine to four, Monday through Friday this year. So our first animal we're gonna be talking about today is this guy. And for those of you guys that are new, you could write in your comments and answer at home with your, your friends or family. And the comments do come in a little slow, so if I'm going to ask the questions and then I'll answer a couple seconds after. So does anyone out there know what this is? So this is one of the most important crabs of the sound. These, this is a horseshoe crab. Has anyone out there seen one of these on the beach? So a lot of people see its tail and think of a stingray, right? Who's thought that before, that it stings? So a horseshoe crab actually does not sting. It's one of the nicest crabs in the sea. This tail helps them, and this is just one of my diagrams. It's not alive right now. So this tail helps the horseshoe crab flip over. So when it's stuck on the beach like this, it needs to flip over. So the tail helps it flip over. So I always tell people, you never touch a horseshoe crab's tail because it would hurt them. It would never hurt you. So another cool fact about a horseshoe crab is that they have 10 eyes. And I'm telling you that because their tail is considered an eye, kind of. So it has photoreceptors all over it. But they have the two big eyes, which you can see here. they are two compound eyes, they're called. And then they have five all around the top that you can't see, and then two by its mouth underneath. So horseshoe crab has a lot of ways to see. So what a horseshoe crab does is they come up onto the beach to lay their eggs, just like a turtle. So again, that's why their, their tail is very important, because the bottom of them is very soft. And I'm gonna get my other one really quick to show you. So this is what the bottom looks like. So it's very soft where the top is very hard. Their top shell is very hard. The bottom's soft. So when they're stuck like this, they're more, they're more prone to maybe get eaten by a bird or another animal. So that tail, again, very important. If, it's, if you touch it and it comes off, very hard for them to survive. So, another cool thing about a horseshoe crab is they're actually more of a spider than they are a crab. If you look at the bottom there, kind of see them, this is their mouth in the middle. And it kind of looks like a spider if you've ever seen a spider up close. And they have 12 claw, like claws, walking legs, where a normal crab has 10. So who out there has seen one of these on the beach? Seen them all over the beach? They look a little different than these. Anybody out there seen one of these on the beach? Sometimes they're all over. They're all over the beach, all different sizes. I have this one, very little. The smallest one. They come in all sizes, so a lot of people think and they come to me and say, why are all the horseshoe crabs dead on the beach? So during, during especially the summer, you're going to find these all over the beach because it's something called molting. 
So like a snake sheds its skin, a horseshoe crab sheds its skin, and you'll find these all over the beach. But the way you know it's a molt is that front part. So again, unlike a crab, they molt through the front. They shed their skin through the front. So you're gonna find a little opening in the front where a normal crab will shed its skin through the back, it slides out the back. And these horseshoe crabs, again, very important to the Long Island Sound and very important to us. They are, they are, uh, they have something called blue blood. So who out there has gotten a shot before? At the doctor, gotten medicine. So their blood helps sterilize all that medicine and all those medical devices. Isn't that cool? So we need their blood. They're very important to a healthy ecosystem and they're very important to us as well. So we have to keep them healthy and we have to keep our water healthy out there to keep them in there. So that's our horseshoe crab. And then my next and my favorite crab, this is my favorite crab. And this one's my small one. So this is my favorite crab. And again, you could answer at home with your friends and family and write in your comment. Does anyone know what this is? Anyone out there know what kind of crab this is? And these guys get much bigger. So what does it look like? If you don't know what it is, what's it look like? Maybe a land animal. One of, one of my favorite crabs. And I have a big, big one in the big tanks. He hides though. So this is my spider crab. So spider crabs are all over the sound. They get much bigger. They get much bigger. Some, some spider crabs, some species of spider crabs get as big as a wall behind me. They're really big. Japanese spider crabs get very, very big. So this guy's one of my small ones in the touch tank. This is our spider crab. So the spider crab is really cool. They can't see very well. Can you see their eyes? They can't see very well. And they like to eat dead things. So if you look really closely, you can kind of see like a red tip on the bottom of its walking legs here. So that is kind of like a taste bud like you have on your tongue. They have those on the bottom of their walking legs so they could walk around the bottom and find their food. So they taste with those, which is pretty cool because again, they like dead things. So unlike our horseshoe crab, which I was talking about before, how many walking legs and claws do they have? So I want to show you the difference. So they have 10, right? Two claws, eight walking legs, okay? And this guy has 12. You can't really count them right now, but. So cool thing about the spider crab and a lot of crabs, if you can see, and if you come down to the center, you'll be able to see them a little more closer. But they have a type of like a furry substance on the top. They're not smooth like a lot of our crabs and I'll show you another crab. It's a little more smooth. This guy has a furry top because they like to stick things on top of their shell. Why do you think they stick things onto the top of their shell? How do you think that? So they like to do something called camouflage. They camouflage where they'll try to look like the bottom of the seafloor. So they stick shells on there. They'll stick rocks, pieces of food. Sometimes I find them with the squid on top that I feed them, saving it for later. <laughs> so this guy likes to camouflage. The horseshoe crab will do the same. So a horseshoe crab sticks things to the top of their shell. Well, other animals will live on the top of their shell. They don't stick things on there. So you'll find a horseshoe crab with all types of things on the top of its shell. Slipper shells, slipper snails. Because this big guy, this big guy here, my big horseshoe crab, they stop molting. Remember, the molting is 
when they shed their skin, just like a snake. So they shed their skin, and that's why you find these all over the beach. But at nine years old, they stop molting. So it makes it a lot easier for an animal to sit on the top of its shell and take an easy ride around. I have my sea star in the tank and it will ride around on the top of my horseshoe crab sometimes. It gets an easy ride. So another cool thing about my spider crab here is they're one of the only crabs that can walk front and back. If you guys didn't know, crabs walk side to side. You do the crab walk sometimes. So this guy can walk front and back but he walks very slowly and again he can't see very well so he has those those taste buds on the bottom of his walking legs here to to find its food so my last crab that I want to show you guys is this guy this guy so this is a green crab so these are not native to the Long Island Sound and that means they don't belong here they come from somewhere else so they are invasive they're called invasive species which means they don't belong here so there's a couple of different species out there that don't belong in the sound but they come over because these guys start out as plankton does anyone out there know what plankton is? You can answer at home. So these guys are start out as plankton, which is tiny, tiny plants and animals. So he's he was a zooplankton when he was born. So they can come over in all types of water that come from ships. So right now, all we do is control their population. But this guy, like unlike the spider crab, is very, very smooth has a smooth shell and he's a lot more aggressive so the reason why they don't belong here and they're they're bad is because they're so aggressive he's trying to bite me right now <laughs> so they're very aggressive so you don't want to pick these guys up in the wild but if you look they have those big big claws and unlike our native crabs like our spider crab they're not very aggressive, so these guys take over their habitat. And then we have these guys, I'll show you. Right here. So these guys are a native crab, and I'm gonna have you guys look really closely. So it looks like it has a big claw, right? This is our little guy, let's see. You can see him. That's our fiddler crab. So the fiddler crab boy, has that big claw where a girl has two same of those small claws. You see the small claw over here. You see it? So the fiddler crab has that big claw, but it's unaggressive. They like to eat plants. <clears throat> so you can imagine this guy compared to this guy, right? So they take over, this green crab takes over the fiddler crab's habitat, which is very bad. So we just control their population. I'm gonna put him back. So I'm going to bring you guys over here really quick before we go. I want to show you the big horseshoe crab in the tank. And you could look at the bottom. See him? So if you look really closely, you're going to see those front two walking legs. You see them? It kind of looks like a hook. So that's how you know the horseshoe crab. That's a boy. Oh, and then he has those 12 legs. Unlike a normal crab, which has what? 10? Ten? 10 legs. So those are some of our crabs that live here in the Long Island Sound. So again, we have our spider crab, which is our native crab. We have our fiddler crabs. Riddler crab and again with that big claw and you'll see these if you walk around the harbor here they're coming back and you can see them as you walk along the the wall if you look down you'll see them all over the place and you'll see this one with the big claw 
is the boy, and then the girl has just two normal claws, and they like to eat plants, so they're very unaggressive, but you want to leave them alone because they're very important to the water here. They help the plants grow, help a lot of things. And then we have our horseshoe crab, and like I said earlier, what do we never do to a horseshoe crab? We never touch their tail. You never want to pick up a horseshoe crab by its tail. This is just a molt. And again, for those of you guys out there that are new, a molt is when a horseshoe crab sheds its skin, just like a snake, all crabs do. But you find these all over the place, not a dead crab. This is a molt. So again, you never want to touch a horseshoe crab by its tail. It would never hurt you, it doesn't sting, but it helps them flip over. So like a turtle, they lay their eggs up on the beach. So that helps them flip over if a wave gets them. Because the top is hard, but their bottom under here is very soft. Very soft. So it helps them flip over if a current gets them or a wave gets them. And another fun fact, they have 10 eyes. Their tail is considered one of those eyes, which is pretty cool. So join us next Monday. We had to switch it till Tuesday this week, our Marine Mondays. But join us next week and all through November, we'll be doing Marine Mondays. And come down to the center. I am open Monday through Friday, nine until four. I'll be here for any questions. And I have programs every week, so check out my website. Um, all right, so I'll see you guys next week. Have a good day. Bye.